morning, guys. I hope everybody's having a fantastic day. Whether you're watching this in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening, I am glad you're here. Before we get started today, guys, today's day is going to be talking about my top five USA-made small um, folding knives. They can be fifth pocket knives, or they can be secondary carries. In some cases, they can be, you know, your primary carry. But guys, before I get started and run through my top five small USA knives for my collection, I'm going to ask if you would, if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification icon underneath it, beside it. It'll let YouTube know that you're a human who's interested in EDC content, and it'll really help the channel. So when we're talking about five small USA-made knives that I think are great in my collection, however much I love this little Mel Pardue bench made, it didn't make my top five. But the first one that did make my top five is the bench made 945 or the 940 mini. This little knife is a uh, this is a first production. It's an S30V. It's a small little knife, right under six and three quarter inches overall, with the blade that's going to come in right at two and three quarter inches with a cutting edge of two and three quarter inches but a lot of people have talked for years about the 940 and same thing about the 945 about it not being the sliciest knife that it's more of a you know pry bar that it is a knife mine's very slicey it's got a very toothy edge and i like the fact that it's got a short flat grind blade. I like the fact that it is thicker. Should I need to do any type of wedging or prying? Not that I should do that with my knife, but if I need to, I know that the little 945, like its bigger sibling, the 940, is set out to do a lot more than just being a very toothy, slicey cutter. Um, but I realize I'm, I'm not totally in the dark, but I realize that there are knives, even on my list here, probably every other knife that has a little bit better blade geometry, but that does not take away from what I think the functionality of a great primary, secondary, or fifth pocket carry EDC knife is. This knife has aluminum handles. This is the OG version. It has a deep carry pocket clip, S30V blade, and this kind of reverse tanto whatever you want to call that blade. Nice swedge treatment here on the top of the spine. Has some nice jimping here over the axis lock and then uses Benchmade's axis lock um, to really lock that knife up solidly. Great sharpening choil. Just a knife that I've really enjoyed. I've enjoyed the 940 and the 945 has been a joy. And when I think about small knives in my collection that are made right here in the USA, the Benchmade 945, we'll have to hold the number five spot for now. So as we move on, we come to another knife that might look a little familiar, but it is not a Benchmade Mel Pardue. It's not a Benchmade Griptilian. This is the Mini Ritter Hogue RSK, Ritter Survival Knife. Um, this little knife, in my opinion, is everything that the Griptilian set out to be and then improved upon in ways that I'll think I'll point out in my subjective opinion. For one, the contoured milled G10 or G Mascus scales on this uh, knife I think are far superior to the scales G10 scales on the bench made. The texturing does not even compare. Um, this knife is 20 CV because it's an upgrade. This particular knife is also 20 CV. I like the tumble stone wash finish on this blade. I like the shape of the blade. This bar style lock to me is much more. Um, well, much more substantial if you just look at the 
um, bar lock releases, you've got much more purchase, more traction on the Doug Ritter Hogue than you do on the Benchmade. You've also got thicker springs and a thicker, more beefy liner, a small steel liner. Um, your weight, I would say, is even lighter on the Ritter Hogue. But the Ritter Hogue, both in the full size and in the mini, is just a great knife. Very slicey, very capable. I can use this knife as a primary carry a lot of the times in my urban environment. Um, it's all the knife that I need. Um, I wouldn't have any problem if this was the only knife I had on a camping trip and I had to start a fire. I mean, this is the kind of knife that really will outwork its weight. And that's why it's always been a favorite of mine. That's why the Ritter Hogues have always been a favorite of mine. Um, but this is a great knife. It's one of the smaller knives in my USA collection. And I just love it. So I'm going to put it in the number four slot. And we will move on. So moving on, we come to a great little banger. And this is the Spyderco S45VN. Sage, no, Little Native. This is the Little Native with the compression lock. This came with nice pink G10 scales that I kept on for a while. This is the breast cancer awareness model that came with S45 VN instead of the S30. So this is CPM S45 VN. I added these um, Rips Garage Tech micarta scales that I really like. This knife is very small. Its um, overall length is going to come in right under six inches with a cutting edge of two inches, but you've got this handle area with the front choil of three and three quarter inches, which is gonna be as large as any on our list. Like Spyderco does so well, even though these scales aren't contoured, they make a knife that is very ergonomical in the hand. So this knife is designed to be held just like this. Give me all the choke up I need in the world. Gives me any type of grip that I want to hold this knife in to make my cuts. It is a wire pocket clip that can easily be updated with the Lynch wire clip replacement. Um, the action on it's great. It's on washers. It's very flickable. It's thumb flickable, even though I hate the thumb flick. Um, drop shutty, and super stable. So that is the Spyderco Little Native and CPM S45 VN, which was a Knife Joy exclusive for breast cancer awareness. So that would be number three, and then we will move on on. Moving on to probably the beefiest chunk in my small secondary or even primary carry EDC knives that are USA made. And this is kind of like a tie for number one, because you'll see number one here in a second, and it comes from my favorite U.S. manufacturer. But this is the Hinderer Half Track. The Hinderer Half Track is a, whoops, I missed the flick. I missed the flick again. Well, anyway, I can't flick it under the, the phone here, under the tripod. But this little guy is in MagnaCut. It is full titanium. It came with a steel liner or titanium liner with the G10 scale. I replaced that with the uh, Hinderer uh, half track titanium scale in the uh, stone wash, which this is also in the stone wash. Then our buddy said Stevie, my brother from another mother, up in uh, Washington, who is, you guys know, a big fan of Lynch clips had picked up this Hinderer custom Lynch clip and he was gonna use it on his, um, uh, I always go crazy on this guy's name, on his little, uh, anyway, it's a little custom knife, guy lives in Tuscaloosa. You can leave it in the comments, tell me what an idiot I am. I love the knife, it's one of Stevie's favorite knives. But basically, the Hinderer clip has this indentation where it fits in this divot that's in the hinderer clips. So if said Stevie was going to use it on his, um, it's going to drive me crazy, the knife that I can't remember, he would have had to grind off that clip. 
And so when he was talking to Casey Lynch at Lynch, they figured that they would just make Stevie a fresh clip and offer those for those knives because they're very popular, even though I can't remember the maker in Tuscaloosa who I talked to at Blade Show ad nauseum and was looking at his knives and he had some new Tantos there that were sold out and uh, he makes a small one and he makes a regular size one. He makes it in a manual and an automatic and it's quite embarrassing that I can't think of his name, but I can remember Rick Hinder, and I do love this little half track. I do love the Magna Cut. I love the beefiness of it, even though it's a small knife coming in at under six and three quarter inches. It is going to hold up to over a quarter inch thick with blade stock about an eighth of an inch thick. So it is, when you look at it alongside some of these other small secondary carry or fifth carry pocket knives, the hinderer is just more knife. You know, it's just a, a bigger knife, weighs more, is capable of more, um, and in all honesty, I think I like it more. Is it as slicey as these other knives? No. Um, but is it, if I was going to be stuck in the woods for a week with one of these knives and only one of these knives, which one would it be? I would be hard pressed to leave the hinderer in the car only because I know it's going to be up to pretty much anything I can put, throw at it, put at it. It's very functional blade, very applicable in a lot of different cutting environments, and then just a solid, solid knife. So number two is going to be the Hinderer Half Track. Um, I've got it in full titanium and in Magna Cut. Which brings us to my number one small made in the USA knife. So much so that I've got two of them. This is from my favorite USA manufacturer, TRM, Three Rivers Manufacturing. And this is the TRM Nerd. The Nerd is a knife that I always liked. It's a small, the original version is this one right here. A small 20 CV, titanium lined, steel lock bar, titanium hardware. And then it's got this little indentation in the blade that allows you to either thumb flick it, which I won't be able to do it under the phone, or under the, I did thumb flick it under the phone and reverse finger flick it, which I can get it every now and then, but I'm not getting it. And then it's got this stamped titanium clip. You can tell that it's got some traction here in the indentations, but it's not all that great. Um, but still, for a small pocket knife, you can pinch it open, you can thumb flick it like I just did, you can slow roll it. What makes this knife special are the ergos, the way that it cuts through materials with probably the best geometry, blade geometry in this group. I would even place it up against the little native that's super slicey. Be hard to say that it's more slicey, but it's by no means less slicey. So TRM had seen several different modifications made to the little nerd you know they offer scales they're very open to seeing what the community thinks about their knives and taking feedback and one of the modifications that was repeated and being seen over and over was the mod to make this finger depression an actual thumb hole or a finger hole so trm instead of fighting that success came up with the nerd v2 which has only one difference the blade profile the fact that it accepts any of these different scale patterns this is the only one of the trms besides my shadow that's not wearing titanium scales right now but this one will be wearing titanium scales the v2 has this little finger hole here which makes it whether i'm slow rolling it whether I'm pinching it open, whether I'm finger flicking it, whoops, missed it, because this is on washers, or thumb flicking it, the hole 
makes it better. I love the original nerd so much that my original thought was I would pass this along and sell this because they're not easy to come by. But in all truth, I love this little knife. I love what TRM does. I love the way they make knives. I love the way they quality control knives. I love the way their knives are simple, washer construction, very easy to swap scales, very easy to take the knife totally apart, to clean it, put it back together. And they are probably some of the kindest, most generous people that I've met manufacturer wise in the knife industry. What I've experienced through their participation and willingness in Knives Live to several different tragedies that have come up with brothers and sisters in the community. I've always seen them reach and go out of their way to try to donate some of their products to help whatever cause is, is being waged, right? Um, and then I know from research I've done independently that they are a huge force locally um, in a lot of other causes. And like some of the greatest people in the world, um, they don't do it for publicity. They don't do it so people know that TRM did this good thing. They do most of it anonymously. Um, they don't want people to know. Um, to me, that's credibility, that's honor, that's dignity, that's steez, and that's grace. And on top of that, to make fantastic pocket knives, I have two nerds, a neutron with tie scales, an atom with tie scales, and then my TRM grail which is my shadow in g10 did not get that one in titanium but to me the nerd is very similar to the shadow the way that the blade is shaped the way that the knife is ergonomically set up i'm going to throw the shadow up here just for one second but when you look at the lines in the handle and you look at the blade, I think of the Nerd kind of as a liner lock shadow mini. But in either case, I just wanted to point that out because the Neutron and the Atom, this is the Neutron, which is the medium version, do not hold, even though they hold the same thinness and the same great cutting geometry, they don't have the same blade shape, which I think is kind of a, a characteristic that the nerd shares with the shadow. And I think the shadow came after the nerd, but I am not the person that would know that. I would have to divert that to my good friend, Mrs. Mary Ann Halpin, or Mr. Wizard Lee Halpin. Um, they would know. So guys, when we talk about my five small USA made pocket knives that can either be a primary carry or that can be a great secondary carry. I go from the TRM nerd to the Hinderer half track to my Spyderco little native in S45 to my Doug Ritter mini RSK1 to my fifth and still a favorite, my first production. Finch made 945. So that's five. I gave six just because I was going to show both of my nerds because they are both great knives. And even though this knife does not deploy as easily as this knife, it gets carried quite often. I thought I was just going to be able to flick it because I wasn't thinking about it. I could thumb flick it pretty easily. I can reverse flick it, but I'm just not able to get it under the phone. But instead of cutting myself, guys, I'm going to thank you for watching this video. I hope you find content like this entertaining. I hope it's informative. Um, so we've got S30V, 20CV, S45, MagnaCut, and 20CV. All good steels, all American steels, all American made. Guys, thank you, thank you, thank you for watching the video. Thank you for subscribing if you are so inclined. And thank you for looking out for the guy or gal to your left, looking out for the guy or gal to your right, 
looking out for each other, going forward with love in your heart, and please choose debate, not hate. I love you all. Peace.